Hello YouTube, this is our tutorials and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to create uh, this effect in uh, Cinema 4D and Real Flow and you might have seen it already on YouTube but I'll show you again So it's basically tech, uh, water coming uh, behind the text uh, kind of like a flood or something like that and it hits the uh, the screen and uh, I just splashes splashes around so I thought it was pretty cool um, and keep in mind uh, my arm is broken as you might already know some of you might know um, so it's gonna it might take a little bit longer and I apologize for that um, but yeah let's uh, let's start open up some 4D first of all uh, go to MoGraph go to mo text or select mo text um, and uh, type in whatever you like for the text once it's selected in this box uh, I'll just keep it as text and uh, uh, change the font um, the font I would like to use is Orena, which is O R E N A. So once you have selected your font, increase the depth of the text to about, uh, let's see, to about 800. I think that's good depth. And uh, then go to Caps tab and on the Start cap, uh, put Fillet cap and uh, radius put it down to 2 and uh, end cap select fillet cap also and put down the radius to also 2 okay so um, now we have to do something with the text before we export it to real flow and uh, to do that you have to select the text in the objects menu then hit C on the keyboard then right click on the object in the objects menu um, click select children hit C again and right click on the object in the object menu again uh, select children again and uh, hit C again on the keyboard and uh, right click once again and uh, click connect objects and delete alright so now we have this text we can't uh, change it anymore keep, in, keep that in mind uh, but that's what we have to do to be able to export it to RealFlow okay so now um, oh and I forgot to mention you, you will need a plugin um, you'll need a real flow cinema 4d plugin which you can get for free on my website um, so you'll have to actually close the program and then start it up again uh, once you have installed it you'll have to start it up again but if you already have it then keep on watching the tutorial so go to plugins real flow um, real flow SD exporter then select the uh, file location by clicking on the little button on the right and uh, select where you want to save it and um, I'll just uh, I have a folder for real flow uh, I don't know how to find it there's lots of folders that I have um, yeah there we go real flow objects so I have this file so I'll go into this file and uh, name the file that I want to export I'll name it uh, splash and I'll export it to that f uh, folder and to do that click save okay uh, now you wanna select the mo text and or actually sorry about that guys sorry about that you have to do one more thing before you actually and get to exporting. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, it's gonna take a moment to do. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna go to the objects 
and select plane and uh, you want to drag it in front like so all right uh, and then you wanna you wanna spin it around select the rotate tool and uh, hold shift and rotate rotate it so that it's like this and so that it's 90 degrees okay and now we have to increase the size of it uh, as much as you like just make sure it's not too small and uh, later on we'll have a camera that will be facing it and you have to have the camera close to the plane like so so that uh, it looks like uh, the water is hitting the screen so now uh, we are ready to export so go back to plugins real flow real, real flow SD exporter and uh, the file path should be already there and select both objects or just click add all and then click export okay now we can go into real flow so open up real flow might take a moment to load okay uh, there should be a screen like this project management uh, name your project I'll name it splash all right um, then select uh, the location by clicking on the square uh, button with three dots and make sure you remember which location you save it to and then uh, click on create a new project then go to import at the top right here import object uh, then go to the folder where you exported that object from Cinema 4D and open up that folder and select the uh, file that you exported and then uh, click open and it will have this um, it will have the text in the plane and to navigate around uh, hold alt and click on the mouse and drag it around to look around and use the various buttons on your mouse to uh, to move around in different ways so uh, now we can create um, an emitter and to do that you go to the three blue dots button at the top here which is the particle uh, menu or I don't know I think that's what it's called and select the square okay uh, now this square is pointing downwards we don't want that so we'll select that uh, the emitter and uh, hit E on the keyboard and we uh, just uh, rotate it so that it's facing this way to the plane and uh, now hit W on the keyboard and drag it back behind the text All right uh, and right in the middle right here in the middle of the text and uh, let's increase the size of this emitter and to do that click R on the keyboard and drag one of these pointers to increase the size of the emitter alright uh, now now what we want to do is we want to change the settings of the emitter so select the, the emitter and in node parameters uh, change the resolution to 3 prefer the higher the better but it's uh, it depends on the, uh, the speed of your computer and uh, viscosity I'll put that to 2 and uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, now we have to keyframe the speed of how long it's gonna uh, emit water so uh, go to frame 0 right here um, select the emitter uh, change the speed to 5 alright right click on the speed right here uh, click on add key then go to frame let's say uh, maybe uh, 15 and uh, right click on the speed and click on add key and go to frame 17 
and uh, change the speed to zero and then right click on the speed and click on add key so now we'll have this uh, emitter emitting uh, liquid until frame 17 so um, so that the program doesn't lag out and so that it doesn't emit the text forever or not the text um, excuse me not the text uh, but uh, the liquid so uh, now we are ready to uh, create meshes so go to show mesh menu and click on particle mesh render kit make sure that you have the square selected while clicking on particle mesh render kit otherwise it will not add the square emitter to the particle mesh which is what you want you want it to be in the particle mesh and um, here in node parameters in mesh um, the polygon size should be 0 .0, 0 0.03 and the lower the better the better quality you're gonna get okay uh, if we go to filters change the filter to, uh, to yes sorry I kind of uh, took a long time there but uh, yeah and also relaxation uh, change that to uh, points point 0.5 would be good okay uh, and then click on the text and go to uh, particle fluid interaction and let's see we have to change something here uh, particle friction change that to point point zero uh, zero five alright and uh, yeah that's pretty much it now we can uh, we can hit simulate and uh, it will build the meshes along with uh, simulating the liquid so hit simulate right here once you're ready and it will simulate and build meshes are, as I already said and I will be back once it's done simulating Alright guys, uh, Realflow crashed, but uh, there's nothing to do in Realflow anyways. Basically what you have to do is you have to click um, simulate to actually stop the simulation and exit out of Realflow and uh, open up the project file in Cinema 4D that you were working on before earlier in the video. <clears throat> but first thing you want to do in Cinema 4D is uh, select the plane um, the plane that the water hits and delete it we don't need it anymore and uh, position the camera of the camera in front of the text and uh, let's go to plugins real flow uh, real flow mesh importer then go to the file path, uh, click on the little button here with three dots and uh, then find where you saved uh, your project uh, from Realflow in this case it's computer uh, C users RI tutorials scenes uh, and splash and then in the project file it's meshes go to meshes and select the first one or the second one if the first one doesn't work and then click open and if you go to maybe frame 30 you can already see that the, uh, the liquid is working and if you go to frame like uh, 80 it's not just let it let it load. Uh, it might crash if you play around with it too much. But as you can see, it's already hit the screen at frame 80. So now what you want to do is you want to put textures on on the text and on the liquid. And I'll just really quickly do this. Um, double click on the materials tab. Double click on this material. Select the color. 
and change it to any color you like. I'll just use uh, purple for an example and uh, <laughs> go to reflection, select reflection, go to texture, uh, Fresnel and uh, reduce the max strength to about 17 and the brightness to 0. Go to specular and increase the height of specular much more and decrease the width and now drag this material over to the uh, to the liquid and then create another material for the text go click on it and uh, go to color, change the color, then go to reflection, select reflection, go to texture and Fresnel as always and just drag it onto the text and then um, let's create a plane, go to the objects, plane um, enlarge the plane make it much bigger so that it can light up the whole scene and select the uh, what is it called position tool I guess no it's called move tool select it and drag the plane high above the text okay and uh, create a new material double click on the materials tab double click on the material uh, select luminance and drag this over to the plane and then go to render settings effect ambient occlusion and then again click on effect select global illumination go to herd and sketch tab stick, stick samples low record density low alright and position, position the camera right in front of the text so that it looks like the screen is being splashed by this liquid alright uh, yeah there we go and let's just go back a few frames because this is too covered by liquid too much and if we render this we'll just see how it looks hit render I'll be back when it's done rendering Alright guys, this is how it looks, but I still don't like that there's so many splashes in the background. Basically what I'm going to do about it is put a plane uh, so that it covers up all the splashes in the background. So go to the object, create a plane, enlarge it, as always, enlarge it, and drag it over to where you would want it to cover. And... Uh, Select the rotate tool, rotate it. Okay. So that it covers a major part of the uh, splashes. Then create a, a new plane or um, duplicate this one by holding control, clicking C, and holding control, clicking V while having the plane selected. And rotate it a little bit, like so, so that you can't see the splashes. Alright, uh, now when you have the splashes covered up, create a new material, double click on the material tab, double click on the new material, go to color, uh, select black, and then specu specular, turn it off, and just put it onto the new two new planes, and you can render it again and see how it looks like. It's going to look much better without all the little splashes because they don't look really good. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It was pretty hard for me to make this tutorial because um, I have a cast, but I hope you appreciate that. And uh, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't. And see you guys next time.